కోసమందరికి దీపావళి శుభాకాంక్షలు అభినందనలు ప్రపంచవ్యాప్తంగా గ్రామాల నుంచి నగరాల వైపుకు ప్రజలు వెళ్తున్నారు కారణం ఏదైనప్పటికీ వాట్ ఎవర్ మీ ద రీజన్ అర్బనైజేషన్ ఇస్ ద రియాలిటీ ఇంక్రీజింగ్ ద పాపులేషన్ ఆఫ్ టౌన్స్ అండ్ ఇంక్రీజింగ్ ద నంబర్ ఆఫ్ టౌన్స్ ఈజ్ ఆన్ ద వే ఇఫ్ యూ సీ ద వరల్డ్ 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 మోర్ దెన్ ఫిఫ్టీ పర్సెంట్ ఆఫ్ ద పాపులేషన్ లివ్స్ ఇన్ అర్బన్ ఏరియా అండ్ ఇన్ ద డెవలప్డ్ కంట్రీస్ ఇట్ ఈస్ మోర్ దెన్ సెవెంటీ ఫైవ్ పర్సెంట్ అండ్ ఇన్ ఇండియా ఆల్సో నో ఇట్ ఈస్ క్రాసింగ్ థర్టీ వన్ పర్సెంట్ and we are roughly touching around 40% in the state of telangana in spite of the best efforts not to congest the cities people are moving uh, to the cities and it has been the experience in europe it has been the experience in australia it has been the experience in usa so urbanization is unstoppable and uh, as it is getting urbanized as we are getting more civilized as we are earning more money as we are uh, uh, producing uh, more uh, waste as we are causing more pollution and as we are consuming more water as we are uh, disturbing the existing uh, sewerage and drainage systems and traffic systems it also poses tremendous uh, challenges so the government of india has started smart city program basically cities require huge infrastructure for example uh, only for providing water uh, drainage and adequate roads etc in the entire country more than 30 lakh crore rupees is required if you only give infrastructure whether cities will be smart whether if you provide it enablement whether cities will be smart and if you give water to all whether cities would be smart if you provide drainage and cities would be small smart or if you provide the sports facilities etc city so you should be smart so there is no proper definition one definition of smart city it should be livable it should be safe and it should be comfortable and it should be inclusive and it should be friendly to all when you are staying in a home you should feel comfortable when you are in the park you should feel comfortable when you are traveling on the road you should feel comfortable and when you are using public transportation you should comfort you should feel comfortable and if you are sick you should be able to reach the hospital in time you should be comfortable so also you should be accessible to various other uh, educational and government services etc so one is uh, the issue of uh, a smart city uh, one of the issues is providing infrastructure then the adding or matching uh, soft uh, soft infrastructure for that and third is how to make the people participate the biggest difference the only difference maybe perhaps between the rural and urban areas is in urban areas people by and large they are in talking terms they are together they are united and if there is any problem it is easy to communicate to make them sit and then resolve the issues in urban areas we all live together we appear to be living together but we are not together only most of the times we leave our problems to the civic authorities or the governments to sort out and all of us have millions of ideas a mere ideation without execution leads to delusion somebody says so similarly now there is uh, no death of ideas in the whole world all the literate all the prosperous and the educated on the, the very active personal generally Uh, they live in cities therefore there there are full of ideas so number one how to capture these ideas number one what are the implementable practical ideas number two and uh, how to translate these uh, ideas into actions number uh, three or four and then how to involve the people and what is the mechanism available and how really our, our city can be smart our uh, habitat can be smart our ga- gated community can be smart our apartments can be smart our uh, what is street can be smart so i request the citizens also to, to think manam aalochitta let us also think what we can do as citizens and what we can expect legitimately from the civic bodies and how we have to uh, contribute for the improvement of the revenues and how we can uh, make the civic body optimally utilize the available resources and how we can increase the resources uh, financially and human resources at the civic body level so i i have listed out some seven eight uh, uh, items where 
the people's participation could immensely help us to improve the situation and uh, like the sanitation. In small cities, per head production is roughly 300 to 500 grams. In Hyderabad, like, of, like city, maybe 500 to 750 grams. And if city grows in certain uh, prosperous areas, maybe 1 kg per, per person. We produce so much of waste. Then it mostly consists of maybe roughly 40 to 50 percent, if it is 50 to 60 percent in slum areas, and uh, maybe 30 to 40 percent in United City area where you use mostly electronics and then you know, hardware and then uh, a lot of packaging material, etc. The composition could differ, could vary. The point is, we are producing. If you are if you are a family of four, roughly 2 to 2.5 kg of waste is produced every day, and in either of 4,000 metric tons, more than 4,000 metric tons of waste is produced. Out of that, uh, could be 2,000 metric tons could be at the aggregate level organic, and at the household level also, half of it could be organic. And in the hotels and kalyan and and catering institutions there, mostly 80 to 90 percent is organic. And somehow, if at hotel level, at kalyan mandapam level, or at uh, catering institute level, if we can uh, reduce this and if we, if we can convert this into organic manure, number one, it can be sold to the farmers and the productivity of the land can increase and uh, soil can increase, number one. And uh, that if it is not mixed with the inorganic like plastic and other things. Uh, so the plastic and paper and cardboard and uh, then glass, etc., can be reused and recycled, etc. The space that is required now could be brought down to 10%. If you properly at a cutting edge level, at the starting level, whoever is polluting, if they if they can also think and they can also act. So space can be uh, reduced, number one, uh, for storing this waste. And number two, the pollution can be reduced, whether water pollution or air pollution or ground pollution or visual pollution, we can greatly reduce. That is number one. Number two, many of us, like in peripheral uh, municipal areas, uh, we think that if we, if ours is a WC, we have a we have a toilet, and toilet is let let into the open drain, and uh, then it is we don't have a septic tank, and the city also in outer areas, uh, like uh, recently matched municipalities, it does not have a sewerage system, so it is not treated, and uh, it is let in let into the drainage, and that is stormwater drainage. So till we come. Uh, till we attain the status of uh, converting the entire stormwater drain system or creating another separate sewerage system, I request the citizens to go for septic toilets uh, wherever it is possible and not let the excreta into the uh, stormwater drain. Sometimes its capacity is limited and it overflows and it causes a lot of pollution. And also we use a lot of plastic and this plastic inadvertently or consciously or unconsciously it is thrown into the drains, open drains or into the manholes or into the open spaces. It looks very ugly, number one, and it is difficult to clean every minute because once in 24 hours or once in uh, uh, once in uh, uh, morning and evening we may clean. But the rest of the time it causes a lot of uh, pollution and it also obstructs the uh, drains. And similarly, the hotels, Kalyan Mandapams and also the catering agencies they use a lot of organic and inorganic material, maybe plastic material or uh, the packaging material. They throw it a lot of waste into the drain and uh, it clogs the drain and it uh, stops the flow, flow of the drain. This is not noticed by many citizens, but we think that uh, in the, the, the drainage is not properly maintained. So this is the role of uh, hotels, this is the role of uh, shop, what is it? Catering agencies and uh, function, functions, functionals, etc., and uh, the people uh, in the neighborhood, or activists, or NGOs, or hotel associations, they should also think what is their role and how they are contributing to the worsening of the situation in sanitation, the and the drainage system in the city, and similarly water. And it is possible. And in Germany, for example, the per capita utilization is only 120 liters per head. And in US, they are using 500 liters. Why Germany should use only 120 liters? And are they not hygienic? Are they not drinking water? And why US should use 570? Because in US, it is all horizontal growth. And they have a lot of lawns. Each fellow has two two cars. So they use what the water for cars and also for lawn maintenance. And they waste a lot of water because they are there is a recently evolving and a lot of resources are there in that country. They do that. So it is possible to reduce our usage. Uh, for, for, for shaving, for example, if you use the tap water, 
you use 18 liters and if you use water in a mug you may complete that in one 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 liter and similarly a toilet flush and also when we take bath and when we wash our cars and lawns etc 30 40 percent there is a possibility to conserve the water number one and in gated communities and bigger apartment there is a possibility 60 to 70 percent of our water we use only for flush and for this lawns and for this type of process it can be recycled only what is used for cooking, what is used for drinking, what is used for washing of cloths, etc. We can use the uh, fresh water, but re water can also be recycled. And this this is the purely effort of the citizens and also the builders and the apartment dwellers and also the communities where they are living in the gated communities. So then the next important point is the public transportation, usage of public transportation. See, in the olden days, we used to walk and the uh, rest of the Europe used to uh, go on wheels and now they are walking and now we are uh, trying to go on wheels so going on wheels is not a problem everybody wants to go on four wheels if one also is going to office or cinema or for bringing one kilogram of ganja we are going to Raithu Brothers in a car so whether we can really fit whether for all these purposes when we are going alone when, when you are going for unproductive purposes and you are com not combining your activities into one whether we should always use the four wheelers, whether we can walk for one or two kilometers, whether we can take cycle for one or two kilometers, or whether we can go by train or by bus uh, for certain purposes, or we can reduce our travel if it is unnecessary. So we, we can think each one of us, if once in a week or once in a month or as and when it is required, once think and then use the vehicle probably. Uh, and use whenever we use, use the public transportation probably 30-40% of the uh, emissions and pollution uh, would come down in the cities. I request the citizens basically to think uh, to make this city or any other city as a smart city. The role of citizens is very, very important. The role of NGOs is very, very important. The role of media is very, very important. And the role of all other uh, civil activists, activists is very, very, very important. Then, for example, uh, the traffic congestion. So, one is all of us are uh, not uh, traveling really where we, where it is required to travel. And number two, we are not using the public transportation. Number three, when we are using public transportation, often the allegation or also the fact is that uh, it is inadequate. The, uh, we don't have a, a adequate uh, facility to use the public transportation. So then in that particular context, I want to say, if there are schools and colleges, etc., and the other uh, education institutions, they can phase it out. Morning, one school can start at 8, another school can start at 9, another school can start at 10 o'clock. Probably the holidays also, one school can have on Saturday, another school can have on Sunday or Monday, weekly off. So that system also can be thought of to relieve the congestion. For example, Sunday, all roads are off. Why not certain schools can give holiday on Saturday? Can they can think of. Why not certain schools can give holiday on Monday? So with the consent of the and parents and also the students, this type of small, small initiatives by the citizens and the institutions may relieve the conditions. And uh, then um, energy conservation. For example, now lots of technologies have come in the world, whether it is non-conventional energy, whether it is solar, or whether it is LED, LED or uh, these, things, these types of uh, things have come. But often we are not shifting because the initial investment uh, is uh, the heavy the municipalities are also we are not able to do and because initial investment sometimes we don't have and at the household level also we we, we don't invest it properly therefore a lot of energy conservation is possible then carbon credit also pollution also comes down if you use less energy less energy is produced and less uh, carbon emission and then uh, the pollution levels will be less generally and in urban areas also it will be less therefore we can always we can always think once whether whatever water we are using, whether we should use that much, whatever lights, the types of lights make, etc., whether we, we should change and whether we can conserve the energy. Is it possible to conserve the energy? We should not compete in the, the, with the sun. When sun is there, and light should not be on in the streets, number one. And similarly, at household level and also at the institution level, whether there is a possibility to save the energy, etc., and then uh, IT. So for various reasons now, information technology has come and uh, many a time we are using it for wrong purposes and if it is used for uh, for spreading the messages, right messages and right communication, 
and re reducing the interface between the citizen to the government and government to government and government to business, business to government, etc. Uh, recently, you, sh you should have noticed in Hyderabad level, after a long, long time, perhaps we are having convergence meetings and we have also created WhatsApp and also e group at the senior level officer. For example, Commissioner JHMC, MD Metro Waterworks, or MD Metro Rail, or the Police Commissioner, or the C CMD of uh, AP Transco and uh, industries like that, whichever departments uh, they have interdependence and they have to function well effectively. Reduce Reducing the call. This is a call coming. Call is later. Call is later. Yeah, but we are actually delayed, so well, that's the reason the calls have started coming. Yeah, how? Uh, no problem, sir. We will uh, take the calls later. Okay. Yes. Okay. So then, uh, also the optimum utilization of the resources in any municipality or any civic body. For example, recently. We have some six indoor stadiums. They were functioning from morning 5.32, maybe 9 o'clock or 10 o'clock. So we are, uh, I have already issued instructions. Why not we make them functional from morning 5 to night 11 o'clock or 10 o'clock? Certain business people, certain industries, certain students or certain employees. So what is the wrong? Let them play at 9 o'clock or 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock. When we, when we create a new So when when in fact with the 10 crore rupees, 15 crore rupees, 5 crore rupees, we create the we create the uh, infrastructure, right? It is not a, to optimal to optimal use. Optimum utilization of the resources, public resources, whether it is a playground. And uh, park. just now I received a call at 10 o'clock. Uh, some resident welfare association came. There is one acre of land and it is full of debris. And if it can be kept neat and clean, and if you don't have money, I suggested we have thousands of open spaces. How to protect the open spaces? Similarly, for all uh, activities uh, to do it scientifically and aesthetically, the civic body may not have money. But uh, how we can protect? Number one, listing out the open spaces. Number two, hosting in the website. Number three, live fencing with trees or with barbed wire or with the compound wall, depending on our financial position. And put some sand and then the light. Then children will go and play there. They themselves will protect. So the, the, there are ways of minimizing the cost and optimum utilization of the resources also. So the the, the timings uh, have been changed from 5.30 to maybe night 11, 12 o'clock uh, in the sports stadiums, etc. Similarly, water conservation methods, water harvesting structures. Uh, we have been trying to conserve the water. Neither citizens are constructing water conservation, water harvesting structures in similarly situated towns and cities in the Europe. For example, they receive uh, 700 to 1000 mm of rain for one day. But their groundwater is enough uh, to drink, to wash, to use for all purposes. They are not depending on the river water. We are getting river water from such distance to 75 to 80 kilometers from Nagaja Sar and 186 kilometers from uh, Godavari. So why not we use the groundwater? Because every year we are also getting around 700 to 800 mm of rainfall, but not even 10 percent is going into the uh, circulating into the soil. So 90 more than 90 percent we are letting it out to the again through drains to the Musi to Krishna to Bay of Bengal. Bay of Bengal has not written any letter to us. Please give back my water. It never said. Are we so rich? Are we so in surplus to give back the water, rain water, instead of storing, instead of uh, allowing to percolate? We are living in a concrete jungle. Rooftop is concrete, and then the roads are concrete, drains are concrete, and the open spaces are properly not used. Therefore, whatever rain we are uh, receiving and uh, we are sending back to the sea. So we are creating our own problems. So my request is. Okay, we can always criticize the civic body, but they recently I read in one of the articles that when husband and wife, uh, when they, they find fault with each other, uh, husband uh, should say five good things about the wife, then only criticize. Similarly, wife, when, he, when she finds fault with husband, she has to say five good things, then say bad things. Similarly, before accusing the government or before accusing the uh, municipality, I, I ask the citizens to say five good things. Whether they are, we are giving water to uncooled people or not, whether we are daily cleaning or not, 
whether we are doing our job or not. So then probably some good and bad constructive criticism also comes, and citizens should feel that he is a part of the administration. Just because he is not sitting in the office, he is not paid salary, he is not out of this network. Civic administration can be and should be. It can be completed only with the active cooperation and coordination and convergence of the citizens. And later than sooner, we have to do it. And in certain places, it has been done. And in fact, I congratulate a lot of resident welfare associations in Hyderabad are very, very, very active. A lot of constructive suggestions are coming. Then I request all of those who are suggesting, okay, you give the suggestions, we will have an idea box and we'll take all those suggestions. But to translate them into action, we also require your active cooperation, not only in the shape of uh, you know uh, contributing something financially, but basically maintenance, whether it is water harvesting structure, whether it is a park, or whether it is a playground, or whether it is a stadium, and whether it is a traffic, uh, or what is a pedestrian uh, facility, and uh, community toilets or public toilets. There is a huge requirement of public toilets and community toilets. And but you should also the public should know that uh, uh, if one spoils uh, for that day or for, for the entire lifespan, sometimes uh, the public and community toilets. Uh, Cost and constructed at the cost of uh, huge money and uh, at the cost of public exchequer, they have not they have become defunct. So the only model in the country is in Pune where everybody pays something, uh, five percent or ten percent, or the, for the maintenance. Uh, and the the commun community toilets and public toilets are kept kept very neat. Why not in other places? We have good models here and there in all these uh, activities, but in such locality in such city where we the citizens and the NGOs and, and and the public activists and also the public representatives and also the uh, whatever active uh, journalists. If they, we all move together, instead of criticizing each other, every one of uh, us are imperfect. And if we, if we move towards perfection, doing our own job before criticizing the others, I think we'll definitely move towards a smart city, establishing a smart city and establishing a smart locality, establishing a smart ward, establishing a smart park, establishing a smart uh, playground. So I think uh, now uh, we'll move to the next. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity and for uh, listening to us. There was some, some technical snag, therefore there was some delay in starting this program. And during the question hour, in fact, I am speaking. Maybe we'll take uh, the questions after the 10, 15 minutes when the presentation on um, smart city and by a video presentation by Bloomberg Philanthropies. A New York mayor, Bloomberg, they have uh, done a lot of uh, work in the world, therefore they are identified and they have uh, made a very good video and this will be now exhibited for the benefit of citizens. And later on, uh, if time permits, presentation by Smart City Consultant for uh, four, four five minutes, <coughs> then we'll take the questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, we will uh, just play the video uh, from uh, Bloomberg Philanthropies. are about clustering smart people, smart institutions, and creating an economic model that can evolve with time. 
Well, we are designing the city. What we are really doing is to design a way of life. What kind of life will make us happier? So the first thing before we do anything is to take some time to dream without restrictions. What the ideal way of life in a city would be. What the ideal city would be. It's about having smartness in every aspect of the city. It means a smart way of governing. It means smartness in the way institutions are managed. It means smartness in the way big pieces of infrastructure are set up and designed. And down to the smallest pieces of the city, the low tech innovations are smart than the most. Those smart cities are just one. Yeah. It's quite compact. It doesn't have the sprawl that comes with economic development. Smart means something quite different. It means Thinking that the way the city is going to grow is not going to waste resources in the future. <clears throat> Smart city is a city that makes sure that all its citizens have a good quality of life. Also, it's a city that people are able to meet their aspirations. A smart city for a person who is going to a family is where the kids can go and get access education, where they can go and access jobs. So, I think the main sort of thing that a smart city needs to do is to be able to address quality. <laughs> Then we are going to just, I think, sir, uh, let's play this one. Five minutes. And I have been obsessed with urban issues for a long time, and school yeah. transport yeah. was very peculiar. They have their own. So I think it's richer than one car, one traffic jam. Yeah. It was area that we could solve this with rain since it got extremely expensive to build and extremely expensive to operate. <laughs> and later I discovered the Cultiva model. And it was like magic. I said, this is amazing, this is the solution. So we took the Cultiva model and we made some improvements which improved greatly its capacity. What gives capacity and low cost to a mass transit system is speed. And in order to have speed, you need that people want to go extremely quickly. And once you arrive at a station, you get 60 people into the bus and 60 people travel in the bus in seconds. You do not need infrastructure for pedestrians. But we have infrastructure for bicycles, and we built about 300 kilometers of protected bicycle ways. And it was a little crazy because almost nobody used bicycles at that time to go to work. But we also wanted to not only facilitate people using bicycles to go to work for a low income person, please may represent a savings of a month and a half wages. But also because people increase equality. It is task of transforming our city and making the people more efficient. Many people consider Ahmedabad to be a forefront. One of the earliest projects that Ahmedabad did um, was his street improvement project, which was in the early 90s when Ahmedabad improved one street to show how streets to be designed well. An inspiration for this. Uh, came from street design yeah, projects in the United States. In the case of the PRTS, the inspiration is clearly from that United States. So we had David Bogota to come here to Africa to explain how he had been in bus rapid transport system. The other project that has done really well is the Southern Mati River Factor project. This is a multi dimensional project that does many things simultaneously. Cleaned up very messy polluted with them. They provided the city with a public realm all along the edge of the city. It provided housing for the people who got displaced by this project. Most importantly, it's a project that is self financed, which is more money from the taxpayers. Good city making starts with the big thing. One is the effect on the environment, making cities in such a way that they don't have a negative effect on the environment. And the second big issue is making cities that are kind of the people who are there, so it can have a social life. Mayors, governors, and city leaders can actually do an enormous amount in a short period of time to make it environmentally and socially more sustainable. If you take this vast project happening here now in this city, London, at King's Cross, what is special is that they're actually trying to think long term over the next 20, 30, 40 years. 
for the public sector has put in all the major infrastructure, so public transport, water, sewers, all the things you need for that, and provided sort of a framework for sustainable development. And then the private sector has come in and made the investment that you actually need to provide jobs, housing, and also all the sort of the infrastructure of uh, making people feel that they live in a place that they want to be in. We've had a number of big issues that have cured the city's plans. So one of them is plan wise. We took a detailed look at what was going on into what was going wrong in the buildings and what the trends were over 20 years and how, in a strategic way, we could affect those trends. New York City introduced more than 800,000 wireless water meters on every building around the city that has a connection to the water system. It sounds mundane for how you would keep track of who's using how much water and how they're paying for it, but it's actually a very big deal. It lowers like a box to the building. You go into the property and check how much water you use. It makes the bills far more more accurate, which means that the individuals have the confidence of conducting the design of the project. We work really hard to make sure that we have a state of the art recycling system. We are garbage is separated, it's collected in a way that doesn't get contaminated, and we built recycling plants here in the city that create jobs and allow us to turn our waste resources into industrial products that are then going to be either exported or used within the city. A project like the Highline, for example, was truly transforming. The Highline was this abandoned elevated rail yard in an old warehouse district. And by turning it into this beautiful elevated park, we've actually changed that neighborhood's entire character. You can't be smart if you're only thinking about traffic or only thinking about economic growth. You have to think about multiple things at the same time. There are sort of very good examples in, around the country of how uh, you have been able to do very progressive things around public service delivery, uh, water, transport, energy, land. The fact that you know you connect with most of your vehicles, whether it's pick up garbage or the buses or public transport with GPS. And there is there are some good examples of use of technology around um, care connection, um, uh, vehicle monitoring, around uh, metering. <coughs> And you can use all of these things to be able to then sustainably operate and maintain, you know, the infrastructure. Mumbai has seen a lot of very progressive redevelopment projects in the last 10 to 15 years. Has spent upwards of almost 50,000 crores to build new roads. And in Mumbai, only 5% people use the car. Indore, for example, you know, has bus traffic on the AV road corridor, which is one of the busiest streets uh, in Indore. And it has completely transformed how people now think about transport. They only see an option which is without the car. All of our cities have four areas. All of our cities have been built around history and heritage. So I think you know, we should try to see how we can build them. Typically, most cities we have, there have been river running through their cities. This whole interaction between the residents of the city and the east of the city.
cities which do exist in India in the year 2006 or 2007 or 2008 <coughs> has yet to be built. So India could build cities that are totally different than any other city which has been built in the world. Smartness can help India cities really achieve that world-class status, not for, for bragging rights, not because just of economic growth, but because that's how Indians can have more productive, healthy, and happier lives. Cities are not just to produce wealth. Cities are not meant to produce emissions. And if we can create the processes whereby we give a set of support to the economy in the processes of this is a good thing. I think we'll take more seconds. Yes, it's almost over. Good. 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 Sir, there are uh, uh, many questions that we have received over emails, and there will be certain uh, already uh, people who are approaching online. So we will take the questions. We will take the questions, but in the meantime, so the questions that we have received over email, I will just uh, run through those questions. No, 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 no. Uh, it doesn't come. If it comes, we will take those. No, so that is the problem. Oh, that is common. Okay. Uh, whatever I will receive through email, you can answer. You can uh, raise it. I'll answer. So uh, the one question is, uh, uh, we feel that the city should be made Wi-Fi. What is your view on this? Yes. Uh, it has to be made. The cost is involved. So uh, all things uh, we want to do it. Certainly, I agree. And uh, in the due process, we'll also do it. Hyderabad is planning uh, to make the whole city Wi-Fi in phases. Right, sir. Uh, the other question that has come is, uh, flooding on roads is a very common phenomenon during rains. In European countries, roads are built in such a way that they absorb water in few seconds. Can we use the same technology in Hyderabad as well? Yes. In fact, uh, we we are mapping certain vulnerable areas where water is retained for a longer time when there is a rain and also uh, when it is a flood prone area, a water retention area, in such places we have to go for a different technology, maybe white cement technology. It is a bit costly and uh, instead of <coughs> black top roads, we have to go for white cement roads. We have already started one such a initiative in uh, road number 10. In future also we will be doing it. Uh, then <coughs> for safety and security, which is uh, one of the major concerns which citizens are raising, uh, they are suggesting uh, that the entire city should be covered by CCTV cameras. Does government has any plan on this? Yeah, in fact, uh, government has plans. And with the active uh, citizens cooperation in Hyderabad, many of the colonies, gated communities and public places and junctions have already been covered under CCTV cameras. It will be a great help to make the city secure and safe. We will be working in that direction. Urban mobility is a big issue. What are the plans to improve the city? Uh, as you know, Hyderabad has been planning uh, uh, to improve the transportation. Already the Metro Rail project is there. And also the strategic road development uh, plan is there. I think with these two things, if they are in place, uh, it will relieve of the congestion. And also the, uh, the habits of citizens have to be changed. Even if the public transport system comes into place, and if the timings of the schools and colleges and institutions don't change, all of them go to the institutions at same 9.30 or 10 o'clock. Still, whatever amount of uh, you know, public transportation we may infuse into the system, but the road will not be able to absorb them, accommodate them. So the, that's, that's a sort of management also is required, of course. And also people's habits also have to be changed. And uh, we, will, we, we are addressing this issue. What are the efforts towards increasing the green cover in the city? In fact, you know, the government of Telangana uh, has started the uh, Haritaharam program. Now we are uh, raising massive nurseries and also identifying the open spaces, institutional places, and also encouraging the individuals uh, to go for massive forest, uh, forestation. And also we will uh, we'll encourage the citizens and institutions and NGOs 
that to adopt uh, certain places, open spaces and the institution places where not only mere plantation, but also take care of uh, after planting that uh, the plants are alive. So solid waste management and drainage are biggest challenges that Hyderabad city is facing. Under Smart City Mission, how do you intend to address this challenge? Yeah, in fact, uh, yesterday only for the first time in the country, there is in, in no other uh, bigger corporation like um, Hyderabad, uh, the government and the municipal corporation would have given twin bins to each household. Yesterday we started this experiment of uh, uh, initiating the process of segregating its source by giving these twin bits one green for wet waste and one blue for the dry waste and once at the creation at the source of creation of the problem we tackle the issue and later on we transport them into different streams and properly make use of the, the biggest problem of solid waste management will go and second problem what we have noticed is many of the citizens uh, some because they don't want to pay some areas where our sanitation workers or may not might have not have gone in the past or some hotels and uh, then shops and establishments or some mobile vendors and whatever used plastic paper is there whatever used uh, packaging material is there they are throwing on the open road that is causing a biggest problem and that's where we require the citizens uh, uh, participation also the citizens responsibility towards keeping the uh, city clean and every effort is made now uh, to convert uh, the organic waste into manure number one and also to recycle and re uh, reuse whatever is recyclable and reusable number two and also we are encouraging waste to energy plants uh, uh, wherever it is possible uh, for uh, dealing with the addressing the issue of solid waste management and also we are uh, trying to rope in uh, the hotel hotels and the institutions and also the kalyan mandapam scattering agencies etc and also the gated communities and the multi-storied apartments to go for the de decentralized composting. So whatever organic waste is produced in such areas, if they can convert it into manure there, it will be very good. They can make use, they can give it to the farmers. Right, sir. Uh, housing for the poor is a big challenge for any city. What are the plans to address this issue and response cities? Yeah, in fact, uh, the government of Telangana, as you know, as the citizens know, uh, this uh, two bedroom housing policy has been brought in and we will integrate with the uh, private participation and also with the bank's participation and also with the government of India for funding and with the private banks etc. Uh, we, will, we will leverage the facilities available and we will uh, try to improve the habitat conditions of the slums and other food people. Uh, so GHMC has a grievance redressal in place. Yes. However, it is felt that the responses are not up to the acceptable level. Uh, what are your plans to strengthen the scene? Uh, yes, for example, if you say, if you take, uh, recently I have uh, analyzed the water board. Uh, on every day we get 2,000 complaints and per month we get 60,000. That means per year we get more than 7 lakh uh, grievances. So we have 5,000 workers, whatever, totally working people. So the grievances are many number one and we are trying to address them in time and sometimes there may be a little delay and sometimes so what could not be done in one day people expect that it should be the recently i had uh, i went to a function and one of the um, citizens was suggesting me to sort out uh, this dumpyard problem of Jawhar nagar within within a week so it has been uh, piling up for decades maybe centuries together and it is not possible with any technology to rectify that situation within a week or month or so and it takes a lot of time so there are certain issues where we have to immediately act and there are certain issues where uh, we have to take time and uh, what can be immediately addressed we will do it where time uh, takes and we will put this uh, grievance redressal system uh, continuously we will monitor it and we will also try to improve it and what is whatever has been done daily uh, daily activities we will try to share with the citizens so, sir multiplicity of organizations for various public services is a big challenge in the smooth service delivery do you have any plans for convergence of these services through smart e governments yes in fact uh, uh, last week uh, we had this convergence meeting at jhmc level and we intend to have these convergence meetings at the division level, zonal level, at every level, number one. 
among all the departments to sort out the issues and subsequently and already email and then um, whatsapp groups have been created and in future we we have the plans to have uh, to link all these organizations uh, for uh, uh, dis disposal of the citizens grievances sir, sir uh, the, the central government is providing a uh, uh, funding of 500 crore over the next five years for smart city program mm -hmm. state government will also infuse the same amount yes. or the local body this makes basically the total amount to 1000 crore over five, next five years. Yes. But this amount is very less for implementation of various schemes under smart city. Uh, can you put some light on how the funding of the of projects under smart cities will be done? This amount is not adequate. Yeah, 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 yeah. In fact, it is a trigger first step to make everybody think why any city is not smart. So the, it is not the amount which is required. Naturally, state or central governments uh, will not be able to uh, give all the money that is required. And money is also may sometimes may not uh, solve all the problems. For Hyderabad mm -hmm. Lake of City, uh, we may require 40, 50,000 crores uh, to make it really, really, really smart infrastructure point of view. Yes, 500 crores by government of India and 500 crores by state government is a very little amount. But uh, the thinking process has started, the triggering process has started. And everybody is talking about how should I be smart, how my household should be smart, how my children should be smart, how my school should be smart. That is very important. The cost of uh, triggering the thinking process, we cannot be quantified and equated uh, with the amount that is provided by the government of India. Yes, with public-private participation and with uh, with uh, with uh, IT uh, leveraging, etc., we can certainly move in the direction of making our locality smart. So you have taken various initiatives for citizen participation under smart city mission. Will this citizen participation approach continue in future or this will be limited only to smart city works? Okay, very good question. In fact, I congratulate you. Uh, any citizen consultation, if it is limited to a particular time and area, it is not sustainable and useful. That's why we have introduced a, an activity called Arche, Know Your Worker. And sanitation in the entire country, in other foreign countries, yes, technology works. In India, near technology will not work. We have to take the assistance of technology. So we have uh, taken up an activity of introducing our worker to the citizens and resident welfare associations or apartment owners, wherein uh, there is a relationship built between them. And if the sanitation worker or Swachadut does not visit that, they will talk and then they resolve, resolve and uh, the worker is not uh, accessible or responsive they will talk to their supervisor and their uh, names are written on the wall and supervisor name and phone number also is written on the wall and this is aimed at sustainable relation not for one time relation where and there are not we are there are not people are there their problems are there that is permanent and then the workers by and large are uh, permanent there and they they have a relationship so we want to build uh, the citizens uh, the platforms of uh, continuous dialogue with the citizens so so smart city is a good concept. What is the time frame envisaged for Hyderabad to be recognized as a smart city? No, one, uh, the time limits given by the government of India, by this uh, year end, perhaps government of India shortlist of the 100 cities that they will select 20. So we are also participating in that, that is one thing. But second thing is uh, there is no time limit. When we become, today we, I declare smart, tomorrow somebody throws some garbage somewhere, it becomes dirty. So there is no time limit, for perpetually, forever, the constantly we have to strive to make the city smaller. Uh, sir, smart city envisages underground power supply lines. Is there any plans uh, from the government side to make the uh, electric wiring underground? Yes, yes. In fact, uh, in, the, in the developed countries, whenever there is a greenfield development now, we can think of common cable. So the same will be used for IT purposes, same will be for, for power purposes, for uh, everything. So if plan is there, but uh, it's a question of uh, providing infrastructure and cost. So smart city also envisages compact multiple use development. Uh, this perhaps would require relaxation in development control regulations in terms of permissible building heights to make the development more compact. Yeah, in fact, we are working out to come out with a 
new building code. But soon, maybe very soon, we'll come out with a building code which is uh, environmental friendly uh, and uh, also to the citizens friendly. So, any plans on use of renewable energy under smart city? Yes. Uh, in fact, government of Telangana has been encouraging uh, to use solar energy number one. And just now I said, out of solid waste also, we want to harness a certain energy and also um, the wind energy in, in a wherever it is possible, not only for the city, but outside city also the government has plans. So, how the projects under a smart city would be implemented? It depends on now what activity will take up. It will emerge in next uh, one or two months. Whether we want to uh, go for a small institute development, or in the entire pan city, we take some uh, IT application, etc., or greenfield in the uh, in the developing area, if we take any activity. So, depending on the time li limits given by the government of India, we will go ahead. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you for your time. Thank you. These are the questions that we have received over email from uh, various residents. Uh, now, there will be uh, a small uh, uh, presentation on uh, the smart city. So, basically, uh, uh, basically, the smart city mission is to drive the economic growth and improve the quality of life of people by enabling uh, local development and harnessing technology as a means to create smart outcomes for the citizens. Now, the mission objectives are to uh, encourage the cities which provide poor infrastructure, clean and sustainable environment, application of smart solution, and thereby improve quality of life of the people. So, this ultimately would lead to sustainable, all-inclusive, efficient, compact, and compact development. Now, as far as uh, the mission purpose is concerned, the ultimate aim is to drive the economic growth, thereby uh, uh, leading to increased employment and income. This will be done through, uh, in uh, two ways. One is the local area development and second is pan city solution. Now, local area development will have elements like redevelopment, retrofitting, greenfield, whereas pan city solutions will be uh, IT-based solutions which will improve the quality of life of the people. And the purpose actually is to create replicable models to act as lighthouse for other cities. Citizen participation is very important for any kind of development. Under smart city, various measures have been taken for participation of the citizens which includes my GOV talk show, essay competition at national level, then uh, uh, interaction over email, interaction over Twitter, Facebook, through SMS, uh, through newspapers, through websites, face-to-face -face interactions, and also uh, interactions at ward, circle, and zone level, and also interactions at schools, colleges, and other organizations. So this is how citizen participation in uh, smart, under a smart city mission has been done and this will be basically a continued process uh, uh, in coming times. Now as far as the city vision is concerned, uh, maybe something uh, we can look at a citizen friendly, well governed, pro poor and all inclusive city with high quality services. We still uh, uh, require views from uh, the residents of Hyderabad on this. So we will uh, keep on welcoming the comments that are coming on various uh, uh, medias. Now, uh, currently we are working on the area based developments and pan city solutions. We will share these solutions in due course of time uh, with the residents of Hyderabad. We will uh, request you to uh, keep on sending your uh, comments uh, on Smart City website, which is uh, www.smarthyderabadsmartcity.co.in and over email, that is smartcity.hyderabad at a rate gmail.com. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. I also thank you, Mr. Commissioner, for his time. Uh, this.
So we will uh, continue to receive the suggestions. Thank you very much.